Professor Clara Sue Kidwell has probably spent more time on more American campuses than most Native American scholars. I think that's fair to say. Think, yeah. PhD and undergraduate degree from the University of Oklahoma. Undergraduate degree in biochemistry? No. That's me. That's you. <laughs> mine, mine was in something called Letters, which is your kind of ultimate liberal arts program. <laughs> Just you know, letters? Just letters. Okay. Greek letters, Roman letters, American letters, uh, literature, history. Um, I took Latin. I took, I didn't take Greek. Uh, just liberal arts, very, very broadly defined. And after getting both of your degrees from the University of Oklahoma, mm -hmm. you have taught at the University of Minnesota, mm -hmm. UC Berkeley. University of North Carolina, Chapel Hill, and now you're at the Cone College. Have I left anything out? I visited Dartmouth for a <laughs> period of time, eight months in, uh, I don't even remember. Uh, and I taught at the Indian school that my parents graduated from when it was still a vocational and technical school in Lawrence, Kansas, Haskell Institute. So that was really the beginning of my entree into uh, American Indian history. My actual doctoral degree is in the history of science, Western European intellectual history of ideas. So bridging those two, is, is, that's been a real intellectual challenge. I'm going to start with the first question, which is, Clara Sue, you have been a Native American studies professor, but also a director of an American Indian center. Native American Studies over here, American Indian Center over here. So the question is, do you use the words Native American and American Indian identity interchangeably? When did you first understand that you had an important tribal ancestry? So there's a lot of debate about what do you call mm -hmm. this work? Native American, American Indian, take it away. <laughs> uh. This is a question I have fielded before. The issue of American Indian and Native American gets into the politics of Indian identity. Because in the 1970s, when American Indian or Native American studies programs were starting in major universities, it was largely in response to the general political activism of the age for Indian people uh, this whole idea that Christopher Columbus discovered Indians. I have a wonderful social protest t-shirt that says, how could Columbus have discovered India, or have discovered America when there were Indians here already? So who, who discovered who? But the idea then became, no, Columbus named us. And if you think about the political implications of naming and the power of naming, People began to resist the idea that we were Indians and say, no, we're native people. We were here first. The problem there becomes the political one with the census. When anybody who's born in, in the United States might say, well, sure, I'm a Native American too. And that complicated census statistics. And so it, it, now it has sort of switched back primarily to American Indian because a lot of us of older generations basically grew up saying American Indian. Uh, the uh, issue of Native American has largely begun to be replaced by indigenous studies or indigenous nations studies, i.e. indigenous meaning we were the per people who were here first. So those two have political implications that you have to make that distinction. A lot of what people call themselves becomes, for purposes of talking to non-Indian people, American Indian, but for people who are aware of their own cultural identities, and I'm part Choctaw uh, on my father's side. I grew up in Oklahoma. I grew up with stories and histories of the Trail of Tears, the removal of Indians from the southeastern part of the United States to what was then Indian territory in the 1830s. And so identifying myself as Choctaw uh, 
you know, that's something I, I learned as, as a kid. My mother, however, is Chippewa from northern Minnesota. And my parents did meet at an Indian school in Lawrence, Kansas. And that's how I come to be. But Choctaw and Chippewa, and a sort of understanding both sides of that cultural equation. So um, what I call the, myself. You use the terms then somewhat interchangeably depending on where you are. Yes. In the university, uh, I would say lots of programs are going back to American Indian studies. There are still indigenous or emerging indigenous studies programs. There are some who still hold on to the Native American study, Native American studies designation. Berkeley's program, I think, is still that. So, but if you think about the political implications and the powers of naming and who decides who calls what, who calls who what, then you, you can see some of the political implications of that designation. You're a native of Oklahoma. Mm -hmm. When did you know that you had tribal ancestry? When did somebody say to you, or when did you feel it? Well, my grandmother was, uh, the grandmother, my father's mother, moved in with the family, and she essentially is the one who raised me because my, par my mother went back to work at the local Bureau of Indian Affairs office. So, you know, and grandmother told me stories about the Trail of Tears and the Choctaw removal. Uh, we had, we visited relatives, uh, and so I just sort of absorbed the idea that I was Indian. I knew that mother was not one of the, quote, five civilized tribes. I even went to my grandmother once and I said, well, I know I'm half civilized and, and half not. Which, which half is, ha is, is which? She looked at me like, hmm? <laughs> you know? um, but I think I, I really sort of absorbed, and in Oklahoma, that's, easy to do because so many people have some element of heritage from members of those five tribes. And so we find all sorts of Cherokee, well, Cherokee princesses or descendants of Cherokee princesses, but people who do have some notion of themselves as having Indian heritage <coughs> in their backgrounds. 